area of a story. Okay, I'll tell you a story about Sukkot. Once Rabbi uh, maybe Yitzchak of Radichev, <clears throat> it was a uh, it was a bad year in Radichev. I guess Radichev is a city in Ukraine. You can go there. And it was a bad year in the Ukraine for rain. There was no rain. There was no growth, and it was there was wars. There was fighting. Whatever. Anyway, people could not go from one place to another for whatever it was, and there was no etrog. So the people all prayed for an etrog. And sure enough, it was Erev Sukkot. And there came driving up a fine wagon with a couple of guards. And a Jewish guy came out with a big, beautiful, golden etrog container. And he asked if there was a place where he could rest up for a few minutes. He's got a long ride in front of himself. He has another four hours, you know. And the holiday is going to come in six hours. They delayed. Everybody immediately called Rabbi Litz, Levi Yitzchak. What have you got in the box? He says, oh, it's my etrog, but I have to go home to my family, my kids. He says, listen, leave that etrog here. And I promise you that I'll give you half of my world to come. He said, who, is, who are you? Who is your he says, I'm Levi Yitzchak of Ditcher. Ooh, Rabbi Levi Yitzchak of Ditcher. Half of your world to come. Are you serious? Yes. So are you willing to put that in writing? He said, yes, I am. He said, okay, but I'm staying here with my etrog. I'm staying here with my etrog. I'm going to send it back to my wife. He tells one of the guards, a couple of his servants, go with a wagon, come and pick me up in a couple of days. <clears throat> come back here. Tell my wife I just made the best business deal I've ever made in my life. You know what it means? Olam Haba. Olam Haba is infinite pleasure for all infinity, right? If I would make all the money in the world, how long do you live? You know, you only live a certain amount of time. And how much pleasure can I get out? How many steaks can you eat? How, how many houses can you buy? I'm going to get heaven forever. So I'm staying. <clears throat> so he stays with the desert, sends the wagon ahead to his wife and children <clears throat> at home. And uh, he's happy. In the nighttime, they pray. Everybody prays. And, they finish the prayers. Everybody's tremendously happy. They have now an etrog. And they're all filing by. And Rabbi Levi Yitzhak tells this rich man, Mr. Grois, stand right next to me. And everybody's coming. Oh, thank you, Mr. Grois. Yeshukoch. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And he's all smiles. Oh, it was nothing. It was nothing. And everybody leaves. And Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Vodichev says to him, thank you very much. God bless you. Oh, here, here's the deed. Here's the deed. And this is, it's all written up, signed by 10 of my pupils. You get half of my world to come. And he leaves. He leaves, he's standing, sitting there in the shul, and, and that's it. Everybody's gone. He's got this big smile on his face. Everybody's saying, you know, blessing him. But little by little, the smile wears off as he realizes that nobody invited him to eat the meal in the sukkah. And so he doesn't want to go running around the street, so... He opens up a siddur, opens up a, a, a gamor, and he starts learning at the top of his lungs, hoping that people will hear him, but nobody hears him. After about a half an hour of this, <clears throat> he closes the book, goes out into the streets, and he sees people have just finished their meal, and they're walking on the road. Oh, he says, oh, Mr. Groys, here's your call, Mr. Groys, good young dude, God bless you. He says, tell me, where is the house of the shamash, of the, you know, the sextant of the show? So right over there. So he goes, he says, hello, knocks on a window opens up on the top. The sexton looks out in his pajamas. Oh, Mr. Kreutz, hello, how are you? Oh, did you finish your meal? I says, what finished my meal? Nobody invited me. Says, what? Nobody invited you? My assistant, my assistant didn't invite you? But you can't find good help nowadays. I'm telling you, you can't trust anybody. But what can I do? I already finished the meal. We're all about to go. Go to the, my helper over there. He lives in that house, the blue one over there. Knock on his door. Goes over, knocks down. Nobody answers. Walking, everybody's saying, oh, Mr. Groys, hello, hello, hello. The hour has passed. He's hungry. <clears throat> Somebody says, it's, all of a sudden he thinks, listen, where is Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Radichev's house? I say, oh, it's over there. See the house over there? And he goes over and he, he says, there's Rabbi Levi Yitzhak standing in front of his house. Oh, Mr. Groys, hello. Oh, I've been waiting for you. Where are you? 
So what do you mean? Nobody told me to come here. So what? No one told you to come? Wow, I've been waiting for you. Come, come, come. Let's let's uh, have the meal. So, let's eat the meal. So, <clears throat> so he says, oh, just one thing. Just one thing, Mr. Groys. He says, oh, yes, what is it? Yes. He said, um, you want to come in my sukkah and eat, right? He says, yeah. So, well, give me the give me the uh, the deed back. So what are you talking about? So the deed where I said I'm going to give you half of my world to come, I want it back. So what do you mean you want it back? You gave it to me. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, I gave it to you. It's 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 yours. It's yours. It's yours for you. That's it. You get half of my world to come. But if you want to come and sit in my sukkah and eat the meal in the sukkah, as you have to give it back to me. If not, you can eat in my house. I'm not going to let you starve. You can eat in my house. So what type of a trick is this? What type of a thing is this? I thought you were a great rabbi. He says, I, I didn't. So we, uh, this is just a, a simple business deal. I'm not, you get my world to come. If you eat in the house, you'll go to heaven. Eternally, you'll have half of my world to come. It's my word. But if you want to sit in the sukkah and make the, the kiddush and eat in the sukkah, you have to give me the deed back. This is ridiculous. In other words, even if I don't eat in the sukkah, I'm not going to lose my world to come. No, of course. I'm, I'm forcing you. It's not your fault. He says, yeah. He says, so forget about, you. forget about your sukkah. We'll need your sukkah. What is a sukkah? Just a bunch of leaves. <laughs> world to come. Eternal bliss. Let's eat in your house. Says, no problem. It goes like this. They take all the food out of the sukkah. They put it in the house. Stands in the house. Mr. Groy stands in the house. Takes the cup. He looks around. Sarim <clears throat> Ranan. Starts to think, Groy, what are you doing? All the Jewish people are eating in sukkahs. And you're going to eat in a house? Yeah, I guess not. It's down. All of a sudden, the voice comes. What, Groy, are you nuts? You're going to get eternal bliss. Going to go to heaven. If you eat in that sukkah, you're going to lose. Who knows if you're going to go to heaven at all? I mean, you did a lot of not such nice things in your life, right? Uh, don't be a fool. Eat in the house. What's the big deal? Uh, I guess you're right. So he lifts up the cup again. These are all internal voices. <clears throat> so bring around on. Mm -hmm. Looks around. Puts the cup down. Says, Take your deed. You want to eat in the sukkah. Taps his hands, the, the servant's taken into the sukkah, takes the cup, and he says, Sovereign Manana makes Kiddush, drinks the cup, and he starts to dance. And he dances, and he's happy. And he's singing, and he's crying from joy. He takes Rabbi Levi Levitzuk's hands, and he starts to dance together with him. And they dance until they can't dance anymore. They're totally out of breath. Mr. Groys, maybe it's maybe the first time in his life he ever did any sort of exercises. For sure, it was the first time he was ever happy. He put it, he said, <clears throat> Rabbi Levi Yitzchok said to him, Listen, my friend, <clears throat> it's true, you lost the world to come, but you got something more than the world to come. The first time in the whole life that you forgot about yourself and you thought only about God. You got true happiness. Because of that, you'll earn your own world to come. Don't worry about it. Now let's be happy and eat the meal. That's the story of Levi Yitzhak Radichev gave this man a gift that was even greater than the world to come. <laughs>